I'm just doing this mindless stuff. I think it's good for fine motor control because, you know, when I broke that that arm, my, my nerves are slowly coming back into my hand. But I'm frozen right now, so anyway. You know, the neurologist, when we were leaving, he said, he, after I had broken my arm, he said, oh, he said, I'm sorry about your setback. I said, it's not a setback. It's, that's what it is with Parkinson's. I fall, you know, and I get up. The deep brain stimulation, that was something. That was fascinating. And the doctor, you sit right in front of me, and when they drilled the holes in my head, he reached under the, the sheet and he held my hand. It was so comforting. I didn't mind the drizzling noise at all. It wasn't bad. It was the sensation of it popping when it was done. Like, you know, like drill a, uh, a hole in a piece of wood and it pops through. You could feel that. They didn't have any mirrors. I complained about that. I, I wanted to see what was going on in my head. But I'm watching his face and he's making grimacing faces and then he's smiling and he's nodding and you know, they're communicating that way. Just to get the electrodes placed right in my brain. Oh, the club I belonged to that I bet you before. You know the women's club? Um, the General Federation of Women's? That's an international club, you know. Well we have our meetings once a month. We have a ju junior invocation. And then we have a junior pledge. And the bottom line of the pledge, at the, the end of it, when I was counseling um, my clients, I used to tell them when they wanted to make big changes in their life and they had a hard time getting things done, I'd say. But by living each day, trying to accomplish something, not merely to exist. And to me, that means a lot. And I tell them, you know, Accomplishing something might be just getting dressed in the morning. I always thought when I retired, you know, I took, you remember when I took a piano lessons at 40, I ho was hoping by the time I was 65, I'd be good enough to play in the churches for funerals. Because they're usually in the morning and then you get some pocket money and I could go to lunch with, you know, but just kidding aside, uh, I couldn't play piano anymore. But I always painted as a young person and I like to do watercolors. I was pretty good at it. I thought, gee, when I retire, I'll have time I could play around with that. I don't have the fluidity, but you saw the wall hangings. I do all the, the cloth things, sewing. I don't know how I can still sew, but hopefully I'll get enough back in my right hand that I'll be able to continue it. I still have about 30 of them left to sell. I just have to bark at them. Oh, God, it's hard to do. And you can't sell them at craft fairs because they cost too much money. But I'll find a way. Neuroscience is essential because it makes my life. It defines my life. I, I can't imagine my life without any medication. It affects every part of my life, my family's life, my children, my grandson. My grandson's always there to, to help me. Steady now, Mme. He says, uh, control, control those steps. You know, when I take a, a step forward with my walker, are you in control? You got, you got control of that step? It's so funny. And, and he says, his little hands trying to, try to help me, you know, stabilize me if I, if I, as if I might fall. It's so cute, but so it affects him too. I think the most important thing is so that People don't have to hear or participate in the conversation I had with my grandson and he said, Meme, you know that Parkinson you have? I said, yeah. Tell me. Well, you're going to have that forever. I said, yeah, I know. I know I'm going to have it forever. No, Meme, forever. I said, yeah, I know that. He says, no, tomorrow, today, tomorrow, today, tomorrow, today, forever. Oh, I, f I forgot too. What's that? I wrote a book. Oh yeah. Um, Not only my artwork, but I have I wrote a book. Co wrote a, co -wrote a book.